Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, oh, golly. Hey, David, it's freezing out. It's what? I just opened the door. It's freezing out. And close the door. Well, just want to see how cold it is out? Not the least bit interesting. Oh. Sure I'm winter. You better drink another cup of coffee and drink it hot. Why? Because it's so cold that I can hardly put my nose out. Then don't put your nose out. Keep it in the house where it's warm. My nose? The house. Oh, I just hate you having to put yourself outside, darling. It goes right through you like a knife. Oh, I'll survive. I'm a great, big, rugged outdoor man. A great, <laughs> big outdoor man or not. Winter is on our doorstep. Verily, it has almost entered our house. This is a day for folks to stay by their fire. Is that what it is? Oh, it's so nice and warm. Yep, that's what it is. No living creatures should be made to go out today, not even termites. What do you have against termites? Nothing, as long as we don't have them. I see. Oh, doesn't that apple tree look forlorn out there in the bleak? That apple tree has weathered more winters than we ever will. What a nasty thought, darling. Listen, I'm not going to budge all day. So nice and warm in the house, I'm not going to budge, I tell you. Do tell. I do. You do. Hope it's warm up at the barn, too. Mm. Why don't you bring Majesty down in the kitchen? It's an idea. Pregnant cow should be warm, you know. And and, and Ruby, too. The cow and the sow stayed up at the barn. And when the winter winds blew, they only said, Darn. Because they felt so warm. Ooh, no point at all. You can say that again. David, maybe the trains won't be running to New York and you won't have to go. Well, the trains don't mind the weather. Well, they should. I do. David, look. Quickly. See on the windowsill? Claudia, I'm trying to read the paper. You can read your paper any old time. That's what you think. Put it down. All right. Now, what is it? There on the windowsill. What do you think it is? A black bear. Nothing but a little bird. A what? Poor little wisp of a bird. He must be freezing out there. Well, open the window. Let him in. If I even went near the window, he'd fly away. Oh, David, he must be starving. What on earth is there to eat at this time of year for a bird? Grass. Where? Berries. Where? Nuts. Where? Right here, chattering beside me. Very funny. And worms. Oh, I hate worms. Can't stand them. Well, whisper it in the little bird's ear, then. You're such a fool. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously, David, wouldn't you hate being a bird in this weather? Well, most birds aren't in this weather. They they flew away months ago. Well, this poor little bird didn't. He got left behind all of Oh, I, that that's a winter bird. Some birds don't fly south. For instance? Sparrows and some wrens. Oh, he looks so pathetic. Just skimpy little feathers. David, his nose must be frozen. His nose? The birds have noses. Birds have bills and beaks. Oh, well, this poor little bird's going to be a blue beak before the day's over. <laughs> oh, look at him hopping around. Oh, I feel cold just looking at him. He's a skinny little bird, isn't he? What is all this sudden interest in birds, Mrs. Audubon? I am conscience-stricken. Here we are, sitting at this, this laden breakfast table, coffee, toast, marmalade, and a poor little bird has to skimp for his back. And I mean scrape. You mean dig. Mm. So cold today, the worms have probably gone way deep into the earth, and the birds can't get out. And... Hey, he's gone. He's probably been looking at you and shaking his head in pity. At me? Yeah, I don't think you you realize how pathetic you look. How, how? Without your wings and landlocked and cluttered with clothes and only two legs to get around. It would be nice to have wings. Not today, though. <laughs> I bet they're absolutely stiff with cold. Say, David, are you finished with that piece of toast? Sure, why? Give it to me. Hmm? Now, you can make yourself a fresh piece of toast. Well, I... Uh, you don't have to eat the remains of mine. I, I... Go on, treat yourself. Have a fresh piece of toast. It's Go not ahead. for me. Go ahead, nothing too good for you. Well, it's not, not for me. Oh, it's not. No. Well, you're not very nice to Mama. Well... She can have a fresh piece of toast, too. I, I wouldn't begrudge it's it It's not for Mama, David. It's for the little bird with the blue beak. I'm going to crumble it into crumbs, and I'm going to spread it all <laughs> over the lawn. What a sweet and generous girl I married. Aren't I, though? Oh, so sweet. 
Well, listen, if you were a bird, how'd you feel if nobody gave you anything to eat? How do you do? If I were a bird, I'd have a bird-like appetite, and I could probably take care of myself. You are heartless, that's all, as well as being an absolute idiot. Here it is, almost Christmas. And what has almost Christmas got to do with anything? <laughs> Aren't you filled with the spirit of giving? I'm filled with coffee and toast. Now, 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 stop protesting. You're filled with Yuletide spirit as well. You hardly ate any toast at all since it's almost Christmas. This year we're going to remember the birds. Lady Bountiful. Oh, well, what's a piece of toast to me, David? I have no idea. And just think what it'll mean to that poor little sparrow. Everything. And here's this crust of bread. We can give him that, too. Aren't you going to butter it first? Do you think they'd like butter? Put a little fat on their feathers. You are not being very amusing. Huh? there we are. Put it all in my napkin and I shall distribute it among our flock. My own private little St. Francis of Assisi. Of a what? Never mind. Don't you want to come out with me and feed the boys? Yeah, I think you're able to handle that job alone. Oh, you just love pretending you're tough, don't you? No, I, I'm not pretending. I am tough. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, David, if you're going out, you better put on your overcoat. I bet you don't believe how cold it is. Well, I should by now. Oh, hand me my coat, would you, Davis? Right there, in the chair yeah. in the hall. Well, just drop it over my shoulder. Now, you put that napkin full of crumbs down and put on your coat properly. It's oh. freezing out. How'd you know? A little bird told me. What kind of little bird? Well, take your choice. Sparrow? A magpie. All right, you can hold the crumbs, since you insist. Now, button up that last button. Oh, no. Button it up. Tickles my chin. Button it up. Oh, honestly, you're the bossiest. Now, all right, I'm buttoned. Give me me crumbs. Give me, give me, give me, give me me crumbs. <laughs> give me me crumbs. Oh, feels like spring will never come. The winter's just begun. Oh, don't keep reminding me. You know, the birds will all be dead by spring day. We should have built them more houses, that's what. Well, my soul and body, you would deprive even the birds of his of their freedom. What do you mean? You honestly feel that if you don't lead everybody by the hand, they'll get lost. Birds don't have hands. You even want to take the birds under your wing. Well, that's because I'm a mother. A mother. Here, yeah, birdie, 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 birdie. Here, yeah, birdie, birdie, birdie. Those Danes of ours have a fine opinion of themselves. You're calling the sparrows, and they answer. I like being modest. Here, yeah, birdie, 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 birdie. Well, I guess I better scatter the crumbs and let them come in their own good time. Or I hope the crows don't get them all. Why don't you put a place card out on the lawn? Brilliant idea. And a napkin and a fork and really make a banquet of this. Wonderful. After all, you can't feed a strange bird a mere You're crumb. So thoughtful, darling. Uh, come on back in the house and none of this nonsense. Oh, what a horrible day. Goodbye, birdies. Goodbye, Such goodbye. Such whimsy. I know, isn't it awful? There's a very self-satisfied look about you today. Well, should be. I feel just like your little orphan Annie. Mmm. I said before, it's very nice and warm in our house. Are you little orphan Annie because you've done your good deeds? I it? fed the birds of Eastbrook. That's a good deed. Now stop convincing yourself how noble you are. Well, don't you think I'm noble? I see a halo of feathers on your brow. <laughs> now get out of my way. I have to get to the office. I can't spend all day in this aviary. There aren't any airplanes around. Well, it, it really isn't fun pretending to yourself that you're ignorant, I fun know. Fun for me? Fun for me. I have a wonderful time any old way. I think it's because I'm married to a bird lover. David, was Florence Nightingale a bird lover? Go, go away. Was boy. Robin Hood a bird lover? Don't kill yourself. I know I know another Nightingale. Swedish. Swedish. Jenny Lynn. She's a bird Jenny lover. Jenny Lynn. Oh, ain't I bright? <laughs> you just think you're the funniest thing on Oh, take off your hat, legs, David. Let me pat down your face. Don't you touch me. Now, keep your hands... Keep your hands... <laughs> Get away Come from home me. to roost early, darling. Well, what's in it for me? <laughs> well, don't you want your little canary to be sad? You don't want me to be sad. You're a canary? Well, you can't even sing. I can I can you sing beautifully can. like a crow. Like a crow. I'm the only bird in this family. You're a rooster. Don't I'm a rooster who sings like a bird. Listen. David, you're wonderful. Do it again. No, just sang for my breakfast. Now I have to leave you until supper. David, you are a ventriloquist bird, that's true. A true. what? A ventriloquist bird. Well, listen to what you're doing. Sounds as if the birds were all outside. Uh, oh, I was afraid this would happen. Afraid what would happen? Oh, let's look. I still have my coat. I'll be warm enough. David, for heaven's sakes, will you look at our front lawn? Great 
day in the morning, it's a lie. I never saw so many birds. We'll be drowned. And birds? <laughs> Snowed under. We've got every kind of bird. Good heavens, I didn't know there were so many birds. Well, you ask for them. Wonderful. Look at them. Oh, aren't they sweet? David, tell me what kind they are. Well, that, that one right over there. Yeah. You see that one? Mm -hmm. That is a lead-bellied thrush. Oh, lead-bellied thrush. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That one on the dr as I live and breathe. Yes, sir. A put it that I, I swear that's just what it is. It's a red cockled mackerel. That's what it is. Well, that that's a funny name for a oh, bird. There's something very fishy about that. David. Very famous bird. Very famous. Comes from way down, way down in South America. Never heard of it. Mm -hmm. Heaven. Well, I think I have the name wrong. There I mean, is something fishy about it, it's though, It's a David. red mackled cockerel. That's what it is. That's what no, it is. no. It's a very, very fishy. rare bird. Very Are you rare. sure there's that kind of a bird? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm perfectly sure. And, and you see that one right over there? Mm. Coming around the edge of that bush? Yes. Sneaking around there? I see, Peeping I see. at us? That is a thrush -a wish Uh-oh. That did it. No, that's what no, it is. That's no, right. that's Thrussel That's Honestly. what it is. It's a thrush You're wish. You're a big fake. I'm not, I swear. Thrussel I know my thrush wishes Curtis when I see them. You think for a minute I'd believe you would... Oh, more birds. This place is getting worse than the public library on 42nd Street. Look at them in droves. You started it. I started... Yes, you, you, you realize, young woman, that they'll, they'll all be back every single morning at this hour waiting to be fed. Oh, I don't mind. Or do I? Oh, they look so starved, so cold. How are we going to support all these hungry mouths true, beyond me? True. There are an awful lot of mouths in a drove of birds. And at eight every morning, each little mouth will be chirping for its breakfast. How sweet. And these birds will tell their brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts. Now, for an example, one bird will come up and say, um... What's that mean? Well, that means if you go over to the Nautons, you can get some food. Oh, And the I other see. one will say... <laughs> And then we'll be picked lean by ravenous birds. Oh, because of one little crumb. Mm, one little salt-hearted magpie. Yes, you call me. Well, there's only one solution, David. We'll have to give the birds the loaf, and we'll keep the crumbs. And as Confucius say, a bird in the hand means two in the bread box. Lead me away, darling. I am going to the birds. Home sweet home seems twice as sweet to most folks when friends and neighbors drop in and hospitality reigns supreme with fun and talk and refreshment. That's the time when Coca-Cola served icy cold provides a most welcome and delicious treat, and you're glad to have a good supply on ice. How's your supply right now? Better get some today. Hey, Joe. What's up, David? Nothing's up. Everything that should be up is down. You mean there's not a bird left in the sky? I mean there is not one single solitary <laughs> single bird left in the sky, not one. Well, what did you expect? <laughs> no, I didn't expect very much. I think I'll uh, go out front and fly away to New York now. Huh? Well, have a good day, a good flight into the city. And, Thank you. Uh, take my advice, David. Mm -hmm. Finish up all your work there. All of it. Because tomorrow you won't. I won't what? Finish it up. Too many interruptions. Uh-oh. So work while you can, and uh, while Claudia isn't around. I'll do that. So long, Joe. Bye, David. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs>